Okay, it's one in the morning. So I've been here a week. And this Jeep is just, it has destroyed me. Man, this is a disaster in here. Oh I'm trying to lap the valves. They're so in such terrible shape. Good God, what is that? It's honestly an entirely pointless endeavor, but I am incapable of giving up. It's like four something. I'm about to head on a train to Chicago to start what is going to be the dumbest, most pointless road trip of all time. You're about to watch me embark on a single road trip involving two vehicles that I bought sight unseen. The first is a 1958 Jeep FC 170 that hasn't run in probably decades and that's infested with mice and covered in rust. That Jeep is located in Washington. To pick it up, I bought a 2002 Lexus LX 470 from Chicago. My plan was to fix up the Jeep and try to take it on some epic off-road trails. I'm here at the Troy Transit Center. About to take an Amtrak, headed to Chicago to pick up the Lexus, and then I'm gonna drive that to Seattle. It's all part of a very dumb plan. We're in Chicago. Looking beautiful as always. Now I need to figure out how to get to this uh, Land Cruiser. It's, the tools are just too heavy. I mean, that's like 100 pounds right there, plus another you know, 50 on my back. Yeah, I'm just not able to go very far between breaks. I gotta go a half a mile, that's gonna take me forever, but let's get to it. My traps are on fire right now. Oh gosh, oh, just a half a block. Okay, somehow I dragged all my tools to another train and I'm on like the top deck here and there's no one, so. Okay, I'm getting off this second train from Union Station to uh, Crystal Lake, Illinois. Well, I'm seeing the Lexus for the first time. How awesome. Yeah, now we're headed towards Seattle. It's 29 hours. It's almost 30 hours. There's my German navigation telling me it's, telling me where to go. 30 hours. Ooh. And for a terrible Jeep, what am I even doing? Here we are, just driving through Wyoming. It's a vast, open place. Lots of cattle. Just slept on this second row. Kind of in the shape of a pretzel, to be honest. Not the most comfortable thing. My $9 Walmart sleeping bag was, of course, a poor, a poor decision. We have passed into Idaho. And so now I'm going over the pass here. Apparently 10 feet of snow coming up. This is it. I'm about to see the Ford Control for the first time. A vehicle that I purchased in July of last year. And now it's April, <laughs> nine months ago. Oh, I see the FC. Oh, look at it. The FC 170. Wow, it's beautiful. Look at all this, so this, look at this grill. Tom Mansfield emailed me the listing for this FC, then purchased it on my behalf after telling me that I absolutely should not buy this. He's gonna show us why. Oh my God. God, that's disturbing. Cause you know that was probably about 10% of the door's gone. Yeah. Well, it's weight savings. Okay, what's the deal with this clutch pedal here? What the hell? Man, this is a disaster in here. Those are the mouse turds. Holy crap. They're disintegrated now. There's yeah, no the hinge. Rusted almost off. Look, this one, hey, we still have one. The frame looks pretty decent. Well, there is the mouse den here. The carburetor is pretty rusty. But the engine appears to be all there. Holy crap, this is the shittiest car. I have ever purchased by a long shot, but I love it. Oh my god! Oh my god! It just ran into the engine bay. Look, it's just scaling the vertical wall. So I've got this very weak stick. It's not requiring a whole lot of effort to put a hole in this tap corner. Oh, God. Sorry, Mike. I power washed the floor and it literally, this, the floor started to come apart. Look at this. But here it is, the most disgusting carburetor I've ever, I've ever seen. 
mouse droppings and all that stuff. There's quite a bit of rust in this float bowl. What did I find in this carburetor? A broken throttle screw. Look at that, throttle plate screw. I have repaired the throttle plate. You can see right here, I got a new screw in, but it's pretty jank, I have to admit. Look at it. I just drilled a hole through the shaft, put a nut, lock washer, and a washer on the back side. But it's gonna it's gonna definitely affect the airflow a bit, but it'll probably be fine. You know, I'm spraying it out, but there's mouse poop all up in this carb. I mean it's everywhere. Oh boy. I was uh, rebuilding my carburetor, trying to get the jets out, because they're really stuck in there. So I hit it with a torch. And if anybody has rebuilt the carb, they understand what the problem is. You clean carburetors with the most flammable liquid ever, carb cleaner. And so there's carb cleaner everywhere, on my gloves, on everything. And I hit this with heat, and some carb cleaner dripped down onto the table and lit it all on fire. So you can see the aftermath here. These used to be gloves right here. Now it's a, whatever that is. Uh, this is the bowl of carb cleaner. Now once this lit, it was like, okay, we gotta do something ASAP. My cell phone, is uh burned you can see still works but it's something's not quite right with it uh i have melted tom's drill case um it is complete it sure as hell doesn't look rebuilt but it is <laughs> here goes nothing tom uh and his wife Devin, they <laughs> cooked me dinner which i don't deserve especially since I nearly caught the garage on fire today, and I've been eating dinner every night on this Ford Fairmont. The whole situation is hilarious, that this family is taking in a silly man in a green suit who's fixing a totally hopeless vehicle. Gonna do an oil change now. Damn, this is actually not bad looking oil. Just wanna point out the gas pedal situation on this. Normally it would activate this rod right here. Now notice how when I push that rod, do you see something on the floor over here? When you push the rod down, this pivot point here flexes the floor. I've got the 12 volt battery hooked up. And uh, yeah, let's see what happens. Oh, it cranks. Here we go. Good God. Zero PSI, what the hell? Oh God. Oh, no, actually that was maybe like three PSI. Thirty psi. Oh God. All right, let's see what cylinder number two is bringing to the table. Surely more than thirty psi. Good God. That's the most pathetic thing I've ever seen. Compression readings in all cylinders. Thirty psi or lower. Now. If it were zero, we could say, okay, there's a timing problem. In other words, the valves are open when the piston's going up, so it's not going to create compression in the engine. It's, it's worse that it's low and not zero, because uh, unless a timing tooth chipped or something or, or broke, uh, in all likelihood, these were just really rusty cylinders. And this engine's probably toast, honestly. Oh, God. Well, we'll find out. Uh, I'm going to remove, I'm just going to start tearing the engine apart. All right, things are going as poorly as possible at this point. First things first, I have to take the top of the engine apart. That means the cylinder head, basically the lid to the engine. Don't mind me. I'm just vacuuming, vacuuming some mouse crap off the top of a, what is this engine? It's a super hurricane. What are we about to do? We're going to knock the head loose. And what, what are we going to see when, when we pull the head off? What do you think? Over I under? I think we're going to see a destroyed head gasket, some rusty cylinder walls, and hopefully not mangled valves. Here, I got this. Got it. Okay. What are we looking at? Okay, we have a little bit of rust on, <laughs> on that one. You know, some, oh, good God, what is that? Yeah, that's not crazy ridge, you know? You know, like normally you'll feel like a really, and there is a lip, I mean, don't get me wrong, but it's not crazy. This one's not that bad. 
But these valves, I mean, there's no way that's sealing. Look at that. How is no, that going to seal? There's no, so much stuff in it. We got the valves exposed. There's a camshaft that basically pushes the bottom of the valve up. Now, have a look at that one that's just floating right there. See that? The spring is pushing the valve down, but it's not going down. So that is this valve right here. So watch, I'm just gonna give it a couple of light taps. You <laughs> see, and it's shut. And then we got our dude, it's no longer floating. Oh boy, so these are, this is called stuck valves. This is a classic problem on engines that have been sitting a long time. This is obviously not my vehicle. It's Jonah's. Hey, what's up, Jonah? Hi. He has in, uh, invited me to his garage because um, he's gonna let me borrow his valve spring compressor. He has an FC-170 completely torn apart. I'm standing in the engine bay right now. Which, by the way, that's how it looks from not in the engine bay. This is what I'm gonna be up against here. So it locks against the bottom of the yeah. block. And then above the keeper. And then and you, you twist that. This thing and it just pushes that valve up. Obviously, I don't wanna take my valve turn apart. But... Okay, so I'm using this um, valve spring compressor tool. All right, hammering valve. Oh! Okay, I've yanked one of the valves out. See quite a bit of rust on the top of the valve. That doesn't matter so much as this surface right here. This is where the valve seats onto the valve seat. It did lots of sanding and that's it. This is the best the top of the valve is gonna get. I stuck some duct tape to it and I'm suctioning to the duct tape. This duct tape method and especially doing it by hand is impossible. So I've rigged up a drill here I don't even think this is going to spin straight. I mean, it's spinning. I just... Is it actually going to get any of the pitting off? Ugh, it's slipping off. You know, I've tried to lap these valves, but if you look, there is some pitting in here. Look at that. Look at the pitting. It is not good. This. Look at that. So it's supposed to look like that. You see that? The valve will seal okay on that silver surface. But how is anything ever going to seal on this? It's completely pitted and rotted. This engine is toast. Okay, it's one in the morning. So I've been here a week. And this Jeep is just, it has destroyed me. I'm trying to lap the valves. They're so in such terrible shape. It's honestly an entirely pointless endeavor. But I am incapable of giving up. All right, I have to show you jankiest repair that I've ever done. Because I can't get directly above it, what I have is a drill with a 90 degree adapter on it, a bolt that's in the chuck, and the suction cup slid over the bolts. And now, oh, it's working great, look at that. Yeah, left that valve, baby, left it. Oh man, I think we might have gone overkill on this. It's garbage. It's total garbage. Better than before though, definitely. Waking up in the Lexus again. After sleeping in motels these last like roughly a week. Budget's running out. And now I'm getting put through the ringer by this dang sleeping bag again. Oh, it's so cold. I've done the best I can to lap the valves. I've already got three cylinders worth installed. But I mean, look, some of these valve seats are just so bad. Really rusty. Look at the pitting in that one. All right, it's Sunday. I've been here eight days now. I'm still doing valve stuff. So I have some concerns about the manifold. You can see there's corrosion on the manifold and that means it's probably not going to seal very well. You can look at that pitting there. I have lathered some what's called a shellac. It's that brown stuff there. It's this goo that comes out of an Asian black beetle but also works in high temperature situations. It's kind of like a sealant of some sort. There's a train that's been waking me up all night. I sleep in this land cruiser down by the river. This has been pretty rough, I have to say. I've been in Stanwood, Washington for nine days working on this forward control. Lapping valves, rebuilding carburetors, trying to figure out what's going on with the clutch. Uh, just, just 
endless, endless wrenching was just in such horrible shape that I mean, even if it does run, the chances of it running well, there's no way. I've been laying on my back underneath this thing. I reinstalled the oil pan. You can see all those bolts right along there. There are a bunch of them all the way around. Um, you can see that I've also installed the exhaust manifold as well. It sucked because again, I had to do some from up top and then some from down here. The manifolds were not exactly straight, so I shellacked the crap out of them. Hopefully that'll, uh, that'll seal because otherwise it'll never run properly. Okay, I'd like to point out Tom's brilliant fix for my stretch clutch cable. Instead of installing a new cable, he simply bolted in this eye bolt and forced the cable to basically travel a longer distance. This is a big moment because I just spent a week trying to fix this engine and we're gonna find out if it has any chance of running. We're gonna do a compression test. You may recall before the compression test, figures were between zero and 30. They have to be above 60 for this engine to have any chance of running. Here we go. Just under 60. This is one of them that was in really bad shape. Keeps creeping up. Still too low. Right now I'm cranking down the distributor. I just put in new points and condenser. Oil isn't even connected to the anything. It's directly uh, directed to the battery over there. It's just this thing is jerry rigged. I don't even have a cooling system, but we'll just see. I'm just kind of curious to see if anything pops off. What? Something? Ha something sort of? Is that ignition kind of? Thing? I don't know. I don't think so. All right, Tom is making us a coil wire and what do you think over under on this thing firing tonight tom no zero <laughs> okay i think that this engine is going to run in some way tom thinks there's no chance got a quarter on it quarter on it dave's own quarter i'll bet him okay you want a little more no let's give it some go actually we should throw some some gas down the carb Hmm, it's not popping off anymore. I think the choke is really blocking this probably. Oh. All right, ready? Yep. Whoa! It ran! Holy crap, it ran! It ran. It ran. That's, six, that, that's a six cylinders, wasn't it? It might have been four. That was multiple, know, multiple ran. cylinders! <laughs> multiple well, cylinders! Not gonna work. All right, we're gonna send a little bit of gas in the car. That should let it run a bit longer. <laughs> I don't know if that was six cylinders, but it was something. Actually, that was not bad. No. All right, let's give it some more gas and then uh, see if we can get it to idle a bit. Whoa! Hey, <laughs> rammed! I got it. I got it spit and smoke out. So. Tom has come up with the most brilliant fuel tank I've ever seen. So, radiator expansion tank. Fuel line running straight into the bowl. It even has a shut off valve. Think we can get it to idle? I already said no, it wouldn't run. So yeah, I think we can get it to idle. Okay. Depends on how much do you trust your rebuild on the carb. Oh, that I don't trust at all. <laughs> but. Let's see what we can do. Oh, Let's give it a couple of uh... pumps. Oh, that works. Seems like the accelerated pump works. Here we go. What? No! It well! No, what it the hell? Well. How is this possible? What the hell is idling beautifully? What the? I am. I am, my mind is blown. My mind is blown. What? <laughs> At the river, I'm in the land cruiser, the, man, the land snoozer, I should say, because this is gonna be like night. Who knows? 
night seven or something in this thing. Night four or five here by the river. Anyway, today I actually sort of drove the FC. Tom <laughs> towed me around his, in his tractor. Um, it, the gears work and whatnot. It should drive. I need to figure out the brake situation. Right now I'm trying to figure out... Man... Do I leave and go back to Michigan without having driven the FC here in Washington? I just feel like that'd be ridiculous. It's Friday, April 22nd, 23rd, one of those days. I don't even know. I've been gone for like so long that I think I today is the final day. I, if the, the FC doesn't drive today, it's it. Like, if I can't get the brakes going, I just gotta tow this thing back. I'm in the parking lot of a junkyard right now. I'm gonna be sleeping in the, in the Land Cruiser. Um, and then, yeah, I'll wake up. And I won't have much, very far to walk, actually. Anyway, today I didn't do very much. I tried to get a bunch of brake parts and too many car parts stores let me down. Look at the cars in this junkyard. Incredible. Ray, a jalopnik reader pointed out that there's an FC at a yard, so uh, want to have a look? The floor moves when you shift. How I found an FC in worse shape than mine is beyond me. Want to see the difference between me and a real mechanic? That's me. I've replaced, I've removed the clutch cable. And Jonah <laughs> did the radiator, <laughs> the fan, the harmonic balancer, which is absurd. A freaking frame cross member. <laughs> a generator, a starter, uh, and gas tank straps. Like, like, just to show you, that cross member was literally hold it, like he dropped an axle in the time it took me to get a cable. He also got the hubs here, and he got my oil bath air cleaner. So there's the FC back there. The Lexus jerks every now and then. There's something going on. I'm here with Jay in uh, Ellensburg, Washington. Uh, he's invited me to his garage. He has taken a bold step and allowed me to roll my FC off the trailer. You know what this means? This means we have to get the brakes working. Jay is crushing it with the flaring tool. Let's have a look. Look at this thing. That is absolutely beautiful. It's as I feared, folks. Transfer case drain. You see that? That's water. The rest should be a nice, goopy, thick. Good God. That looks horrible. Holy cow. Look at that. Oh boy. Transmission drain plug. It's draining water as well. Oh boy. Good Lord. Look at all that water. Ah. Shit. Splash zone. Look at all that water, the whole, oh, there we go. We got some oil now, but there's an alarming amount of water. I had to go to a, an old air-cooled Volkswagen shop, and they also work on Subarus, uh, to get this puller. Oh, 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 shit. We've got some shoe left, but not a whole lot. Enough to get us by, barely. <laughs> we were trying to bleed the brakes here after redoing the entire brake system and, we're, and Jay's over here pumping the pedal. I'm getting no fluid. What happened, Jay? There's not enough pedals. There's only two. He was pumping the clutch pedal. <laughs> Cause there, in your defense, there is no gas pedal. So if I were, yeah, anybody would say that's, yeah, that's the brakes and that's the so gas. So this is showering after a long day of wrenching. I gotta show you this, look at this. Look at that. There is literally rust in my ears. How is that possible? Now that I look at it, oh God, look at it, there's like rust. Oh shit. Hanging out at Jay's garage still. And Jay has been a, just an absolute beast at the brake line flaring and bending. The brakes on this thing are gonna look as good as factory. I really believe it. Well, maybe not quite, but they look great. And I'm gonna feel so confident driving this thing with completely new brake lines and wheel cylinders and master cylinder. Actually, you know what? Can you show us how you did the flares? So to make the flare, what he does uh, is, of course, he cuts it. You can't just cut it with a snipper or no. you'll, you'll squeeze the line. So you use a that tool right there, which just goes around in circles. 
have my trusty knife. You just want to go in and spin it. Get rid of the little pieces of, of metal burring. But he's going to shove it into this tool layer yep. and tighten it up. And then one of those dealios goes into the pipe. Whoop. And then he cranks it down with this thing. And then he takes the little black thing out. And then he cranks it, it down again. And the end result is beautiful flaring. And we're going to show the whole brake system now. Because it is, I'm telling you, I'm so proud of this brake system because it looks so good. All right, let's start with the master cylinder. That's that thing right there. Okay, here's the hard line for the master cylinder. This is the first line that we made. It goes along this front bumper beam into a junction. In the junction, it splits off. One goes, and this is, you know, the bend isn't amazing, but it, it goes to the driver's side and runs along the frame rail. You'll see it up top there. Then there's another line from the junction, it goes to the passenger side, also runs along the frame rail. All right, I'm in a motel. I think I just finished my final day of wrenching on the FC. Tomorrow's a day we're gonna see, we're gonna see what happens. Theoretically, right now is going to be the inaugural drive. Three weeks of non-stop wrenching. I'm hoping something comes out of it. Otherwise, I just wasted three weeks. We're gonna open the, uh, the valve here. Okay, hand throttles right here. You'll see how the, it opens the throttle over there. Hook up the coil here. Pump the gas a few times. How slick is that? And then we're gonna, we're gonna crank it here. a bit of coolant, but it's epic. All the gears work, it drives in forward. I bet you reverse works, I haven't even tried it. Anyway, I'm gonna keep driving this thing. Probably off-road because the tires are so old. It's been four days, well, three days with, with Jay uh, in Ellensburg, Washington. Got to drive it for the first time, and oh my gosh, it was just awesome. And now I'm headed east through Idaho, Gonna head into Wyoming, South Dakota. This is where we find out if this whole trip was a huge waste of time. I am going to take the FC for its very first test run off-road. I just put the cylinder head bolts in with some thread sealant. I also put a jerry can uh, on a pole. I'll show you that in a sec. All right, here we are in the hills of Idaho. Uh, I gotta hook up my fuel tank and then yeah, we'll see what happens. There we go. Here we are. We're in the FC. We're off-roading in Idaho. Look at this. The brakes work. The steering works. The engine works. 
works. I need to have a cruise control, sort of. This is amazing. So far, my jerry can is not falling. We're making a lot of smoke. I don't know how long this engine's gonna last. It's doing great up this uh, up this steep grade. Idaho is a beautiful place, and this FC is loving every moment of it. Got my my setup here. Five gallon jerry can on the post. We've got a hose. We got a shut off valve. Fuel filter goes directly into the carburetor. I don't have a fuel pump that works, so gravity is my fuel pump. Anyway, time to get back to it. Things are uh, slow. We're making it up this mountain. The question is, do I keep going or do I turn around? Knowing that I don't have a starter and if I stall it, I'm going. We're going up a steep grade. It's really steep. Like, ridiculously steep. The FC is a beast. It's an absolute beast. Climbed to the top of Idaho. It can take really steep inclines without any issue. This was a great test run. The FC passed with flying colors. Now it's time for a longer journey. A full day of off-roading tomorrow. Somewhere, maybe in Montana, we'll see. In Montana, we're headed toward Glacier National Park. I met a guy in the Walmart parking lot and he invited me to his house. So I'm going to his house now. Uh, I hope he's not gonna harvest my organs. We'll see. A dude in the Walmart parking lot invited me to his house and I went. But I will say, this right here legitimizes him as one of us, if you will. The sweet Ford truck. Anyway, he's got this incredible house in, where are we exactly? Montana, Kalispell, Montana. Well, Phil's Garage Mahal is gonna allow us a very first look at the underside of this FC. Like a good, a good look at the underside. Like we don't have to crawl or anything. Okay, you can see the frame is brown, but it's still strong. Look at these beefy leaf springs. It's amazing. See the new brakes I put in with my, Ooh. with the guy, with my friend Jay. Transfer case is all, looks all good. Everything looks, there's a the radiator. Steering. Honestly, everything looks pretty, looks pretty good under here. Headed into Glacier National Park. It's been a very long trip. Yeah, it's coming to an end now. It's time to head back home with the Lexus, tow the FC. But, uh, but not before driving this thing around. And it's time to drive around Glacier in this incredible machine. Look at this. Behold, hand throttle. Let off the clutch. We're moving, heck yeah. We're going for the upshift. We're going for the upshift, here it is. There it is, second gear. The FC, it's amazing. Okay, we're having some issues with the throttle cable. The outer, cable there has come loose from its holder and what that means is that the cable itself is sliding, the outer cable is sliding instead of the, the inner cable that's hooked to the throttle. So you can see what happened, what's happening there. See that? The cable, the inner cable is not moving but the, the sheath is so I, I gotta fix that. With the throttle cable uh, screwed up, I'm not moving very quickly. <laughs> Look at how slowly I'm driving. I'm applying throttle with a hammer. Look at this. Oh, oh, oh yes, the hammer. Hammer down, baby. We're gonna shift. I'm gonna show you the startup sequence on this FC because it's a bit absurd. Step one, steel Lexus LX470 battery. Actually, step two is put it in neutral. Then we've got these jumper cables that are permanently attached to the starter. There's another step. We want to turn that on. We got to give this thing some fuel. You have to hook up the ignition coil here. I keep it stored in this plastic tube so it doesn't short on anything. Oh my gosh. Yes. And that's the startup sequence. I'm here with Zach, whose friend Phil I met in the Walmart parking lot. He was like, hey, my friend Zach loves to go off-roading. I'll put you in touch with him. So now I'm going off-roading with, with Zach. Okay, I'm about to, I'm about to take a break. 
pretty, pretty tough obstacle here. So this is what, the fourth time we've lost uh, siphon on the gas? At least. Yeah, so we've been losing siphon on the gas. Sometimes, you know, the off-camber, off-roading, I think, takes the hose out of the, the gas, and once there's, an air, once there's air in it, you can forget about it. But we have a great solution. I'm able to use that si siphon uh, pump, hand pump, to siphon the fuel, as I will now demonstrate. It is a gross process that involves my arms getting covered in gasoline. Oh, that didn't take much. Boom. Once you get gas to it, here's all you gotta do. Watch. There it is. Get fuel to it and it'll run. It runs very well. No weird sputters. Oh. What did I just say? This is a tight turn I gotta make. There we go. Oh my lord! Zach got himself thoroughly high centered because Zach understands how to off road. If you're not getting stuck, you're not trying hard enough. We have made it to this little camping spot. Zach just cooked up some mean bratwurst for us. And that's it. This is, we're gonna have to head all the way back down. It's gonna be, gonna take a while. But this is ultimately the culmination of all of that work. Almost, you know, four weeks of wrenching on this FC. Ends right here in this camping spot on the top of some hill and somewhere in Montana. I want to thank Tom Mansfield in Washington, Stanwood, Washington, for buying this on my behalf, telling me that it even existed, buying it on my behalf and spending hours and hours of his time helping me tear into the engine. I have to thank Jay for redoing the entire braking system with me over a period of like three days. Phil, whom I met in the Walmart parking lot, I have to thank him for swapping my tires over and for introducing me to this fine man, Zach. Um, that's it. The tail of the FC. 
Actually, it's not over. I still have to uh, tow it all the way back to Michigan in my Land Cruiser. Hopefully that's uneventful. If I look absolutely terrible, it's because I've been sleeping in this car for four days straight or something and I just went off roading yesterday for seven hours straight. And I think I'm pushing a little too far. Not a whole lot out here in uh, Eastern Montana. Okay, we're back in Michigan. The Lexus did a great job towing. Now the FC, it's time to introduce it to the rest of the fleet. <laughs> 